The network menu is where you can go to make changes to your network settings, especially after you use the wizard for that initial configuration. Here on the IP and ports screen, we see both network cards. If one of the network cards is grayed out, that means that the cable is not plugged in. You'll need to plug a cable in to be able to make changes to that. You can click the setup button and you can change the IP address mode from manual to DHCP depending on your network needs. And then you can adjust the IP address, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. If your gateway is not set correct, you will not have internet access. The DNS can be set to manual where you're gonna enter in an IP address or it can be set to auto where it will receive it from DHCP. You can also enter an IPv6 configuration if you're using that. And then back on our IP and port screen, we have our transfer bandwidth. That's how much bandwidth we want to allow for clients to connect to the unit in case we need to limit that down in our default gateway. We have to select which network card, which interface is going to be used for internet access or remote access to a different network. On the port menu, we can choose our transmission protocol. Typically, you'll leave that at TCP. You'll see what ports we are using. If you need to do port forwarding or other types of remote access, these ports can be changed if needed. We also have the camera HTTP proxy ports. That allows you to get remote access to the cameras through the recorder, which is great for system maintenance. The DDNS menu allows you to track a name for your device in case you do not have a static IP address from your ISP. You can use third party or the Hanwha provided DDNS. You have to go to the website, you have to register a DDNS name or we call it a product ID and you enter it here. We also have Quick Connect which attempts to use universal plug and play to do automatic port forwarding. It's recommended that you use our QR code to connect to your mobile app or you use our P2P service for our NVRs to connect to the WiseNet viewer application. Typically, you'll just use DDNS on whichever network interface is connected to the internet. IP filtering is a cybersecurity feature where you can limit what devices the recorder can talk to. You can enter an allow or deny list of IP addresses for this setting. Be careful if you set this up, make sure you properly put in the IP address of any workstations and clients that you will be using. The HTTPS menu lets you configure the web page of the NVR. By default, it's using HTTP and HTTPS is also running. You can change the configuration to have only one or the other running. Be careful not to turn off both servers, otherwise you will not be able to access the web page. The unit comes with a built-in certificate or you can load in your own certificate. 802.1x is used on corporate environments where you want to lock down access to the network using certificates so you could load in those certificates and settings there. Here we can configure email notifications. First we'd enter in our email SMTP mail server and configure the port and any authentication and security settings that you may need. Then we can set up the interval of how often email is sent and then we can create recipients, we can create groups and users. SNMP is a network management protocol. There are three different versions supported. Version 3 is the recommended one to use because it uses security. You need to have HTTPS mode enabled for that to work. The DHCP server setting allows you to enable a DHCP server to hand out IP addresses to devices on your network. You can do this for either network adapter. Be careful though and make sure you don't turn this on if you already have a DHCP server on your network. You can also check out the status of the DHCP server to see what addresses it's handed out, to what devices, and on which interface. The failover feature allows you to set up a failover between two NVRs of the same model in case there's a failure of one for high availability situations. The last network option is the P2P function. This allows you to easily connect this recorder to the WiseNet mobile app or the WiseNet viewer software. All you have to do is check that box and 
then you have remote access. And then you can use the P2P function. With your mobile app, you can just scan the QR code. This allows you to have remote access without needing to do port forwarding.